Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarpley here in Washington, D.C. I want to call your attention, as always, to my recent uh, books, Obama the Postmodern Coup, The Making of a Manchurian Candidate, the entire story of how Obama got elected by taking those methods that had been used in Tehran, 1978, the Philippines, 1984, in Kiev, and in uh, Tiflis, Georgia, in the uh, earlier part of this decade, and bringing that all back home. And that was Obama's postmodern coup. Uh, we've also got Barack H. Obama, the unauthorized biography, attracting more attention now that uh, Obama is becoming more and more odious in the eyes of a uh, majority of the U.S. population. Also, Surviving the Cataclysm, the indispensable book, the one indispensable book on uh, on uh, economics in the crisis. Uh, and uh, here we have a very interesting review posted by someone who I don't know, which I did not solicit on uh, Amazon.com. This is done by E.L., a uh, reviewer from Chicago, and says, this book was written, actually a lot of it was written, not all of it, was written in 1999, and the author accurately predicts the currently unfolding global economic destruction being wrought by derivatives. He describes in detail the mode by which leverage created through derivative use will and would bring down global banking powerhouses and our nation's economy. His reasoned assumptions of how the Federal Reserve would handle such a crisis is actually chilling to read because he gets it completely right. He gets it completely right. Thank you to E.L. in Chicago. Uh, and uh, he's, he sums up, he says, a fascinating book for its history of the global loan financial structures and turmoil that has been caused, along with a prescient analysis of how it comes crashing down. Great book. Thank you to E.L. of Chicago, uh, whom I do not know, uh, but uh, it's good to know that people out there do read and that you get the idea of the book. The only thing I would add is the program. In other words, the big question now is to, of course, understand what has just happened. That we've been through a derivatives crisis, not a subprime mortgage crisis. No, no, no. Not a crisis of greed. Not that the American middle class has uh, unreasonable expectations. No, no. But derivatives, derivatives, derivatives. And, of course, the big thing now is the program to get out of such a depression. And we'll be talking about that various points in today's broadcast. But it can't be a reactionary Republican program. It can't be some version of the Austrian school and the Chicago school because they have helped to cause the crisis. Their deregulation, privatization, union busting, race to the bottom, destruction of the state sector, destruction of the social safety net, and so forth. Uh, that is the cause. Now, the, uh, the London Economist this week has a story about what happened to economics, the failure of economics. Uh, we'll be reporting on that next week, but the, uh, the main point is that they don't get it. They don't understand that this is now, uh, the, ironically, the triumph of the New Deal system as we see that all of those New Deal safeguards, the ban on derivatives, Glass-Steagall, the uptick rule, the various kinds of New Deal regulations that had been in place have all been dismantled because of the Austrians and the Chicago boys. And that is, of course, what is detonated at least this world economic depression. Now, Obama, um, Obama the postmodern coup, Obama the unauthorized biography, and surviving the cataclysm. You can get all those at Amazon.com and indeed at ProgressivePress.com and indeed at other places around the internet. Use the use the one that's most congenial to you. Uh, Obama's uh, press conference. Uh, you notice that he refuses to spell out any details. This, of course, is uh, not uh, increasing confidence. Also, uh, I'm not going to get into the, the, the question of his friend, Professor Gates of Harvard, and the various merits of uh, the policeman and, and Professor Gates, the Harvard professor, simply to say that this shows how amateurish and how bungling Obama is. Stupid in this context is Obama. Cruel, as he showed in the... Uh, Cruel, cruel, as he showed in the part on health care, and stupid, as he showed by even allowing this question to come up. The correct answer would be no comment, or I have a conflict of interest. The guy's a friend of mine. Uh, I'm not going to comment. Don't comment, because what do you do? You step on your own story. In other words, the whatever blathering about 
health care and health insurance Obama wanted to deliver, this has now been eclipsed by the controversy over, uh, over Professor Gates. And it simply shows that Obama is a novice, a Cairo, a bungler, uh, does not have the political skills. And this is going to be now, we're soon going to get into the kind of stuff we heard from Carter of, during the Carter administration. Can Obama cope? Is he competent? Can he be president? Is he up to the job? Well, no, of course not. And that was all clear quite a while ago. No experience, no achievements, everything dished up by the fine trilateral hand. A couple of examples. Uh, the F-22. Ah, uh, Obama has succeeded in defeating the F-22. Well, uh, this is a mixed blessing. Uh, if that stays defeated, I think at that point the United States would not have a single assembly line for fighter jets going. Uh, whereas between Russia and China, the estimate is you have 12 assembly lines for fighter jets going. Um, this is not good. Uh, some kind of rough parity, rough balance, approximate balance is always a good idea in strategic and military affairs. It helps stability. Uh, if you get too weak, if you're very, uh, very hated and very weak and people think you're rich even though you're not, you may be in trouble, right? Ask the Italian Renaissance in the 1500s. Uh, therefore, we don't want the U.S. to collapse at this rapid rate that we see under Obama. We want the U.S. to maintain some form of rough parity with these other powers simply because it keeps everything on an even keel. If you get too weak, some people may begin to get ideas, and you don't want to find out what those ideas might be. The, the torpedoing of the F-22 by Obama, and apparently here he worked on it, right? This is very interesting. For, for card check on the unions, for uh, the cram down that he's now uh, uh, abandoned, Obama didn't lift a finger. For the F-22, it looks like he, he did some arm twisting and he made some phone calls. Now, Carter did the same thing. Carter's ban of water projects, the various kinds of dams, locks, sewage systems, water systems that Carter... Uh, destroyed during 1977 is one of the things that poisoned his relations with the Congress. So Obama is now in the process of poisoning his own relations with the Congress, even as relations with the Pentagon have been largely poisoned because of the brusque and insulting way that Obama dismissed General McKiernan, the military traditionalist who had been running the uh, show in Afghanistan, and put in the utopian terrorist controller General McChrystal, who is documented in the New York Times as having been a torturer, somebody who set up 15 torture stations in Iraq, according to the New York Times. So as a result of this, Obama has alienated the Congress. Obama has alienated the firemen with that Sotomayor appointment. Right? Whatever we think of Sotomayor, uh, the world's firemen uh, were on the other side. And now in that press conference this past week, Obama has managed to alienate the cops, the Cambridge police, and the doctors, because he, 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 he accused the doctors of uh, carrying out tonsil operations to get money. So you're building up a lot of groups that you've really alienated and antagonized. Back in a minute.